Today's Do Now is going to be a review of Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures from yesterday. So today's Do Now is dealing with a mixture of helium, neon, and argon put in a 10 liter container. And in this Do Now, your job is to calculate the partial pressure of each gas as well as the total pressure. So pause the video, see if you can solve it, and then continue watching the video uh, for me working through the answers. So this Do Now question gave us a mixture of gases and wants us to calculate the partial pressure of each as well as the total pressure of the entire thing. So there's actually two ways that you can go about this question. The first way is you can use the ideal gas law to individually solve for each of these partial pressures. So I'm gonna show you both ways. So I'm gonna start by showing you using the ideal gas law for each. So Pivner, so PV equals NRT, if I'm solving for P, it's going to be NRT over V for each one of these. NRT over V, NRT over V. So I'm gonna use my number of moles, my ideal gas, gas law constant, my temperature, and my volume. So my number of moles they gave me, 0.765. I'm gonna use 0.08206 if I'm not given a uh, pressure, and then I'm just gonna solve an ATM. My temperature though, remember, you can't use Celsius, you must use Kelvin, so 298 Kelvin. So 298, all divided by 10 liters. And I'm gonna do that for each one of these gases, so that way I can find the partial pressure of each one of them. So now I have my partial pressures for each one. So to find total pressure, I just add those three numbers up. So I just add up my pressure of helium plus my pressure of neon plus my pressure of argon, and I get 2.946 atm. Now another way that I can do this is I can find the total pressure using the ideal gas law. So another way I can go about solving this is I can use the ideal gas law to solve for P total. So what that means is I need total number of moles here when I plug this in. And so if I add up all three of my moles, so 0.765 plus 0.33 plus 0.11, that gives me 1.205 moles times R, I'm gonna use 0 0.08206 times 298, all divided by 10 liters. And so if I do that, I find P total to be 2.947 atm. Now notice it's a little bit different just because of rounding. There's my total pressure. Now to solve for my partial pressure, I can use my mole fraction times my total pressure. If I use my mole fraction times my total pressure, this will give me my partial pressure of each gas. And so what I can do is I can take for each one, for helium, I'll do 0.765 divided by my total, 1.205 times total pressure. That'll give me my partial pressure. Same thing for neon, 0.33 divided by my total number of moles, times my total pressure, gives me my partial pressure of neon, and then I can do the same thing for argon. So 0 0.11 divided by 1.205, multiply by your total pressure, and that will give you your partial. So notice there are two different ways you can go about solving this problem, and you'll get the same thing both times. So in class today, I want you to work on the following. So you're gonna start by continuing to watch this video and watch the root mean squared speed example, the effusion and diffusion discussion and review, as well as the Graham's law example. So there are some examples and discussion or review that I want you to watch. And remember, this is the same thing that we would be doing in class. And then I want you with your groups to work through the lecture four and five practice and check your answers. The answer key to the lecture four and five practice is linked on the calendar as well as on the website. So lecture four and five practice is the very last part of the practice packet. Then I want you to continue working on the molar volume pre-lab. So that might mean that you are just starting it or that you need to finish it up. 
just keep in mind that there is a video on the calendar that I emailed you guys that has me working through the pre-lab questions. So the molar volume pre-lab is purpose, procedure, pre-lab questions. And then finally, if you have any extra time, uh, just continue working on mastering chemistry. Remember to use the in-class practice to help you because some of the mastering questions are pretty much identical to the practice that I've been having you do in class. So just keep in mind that everything is on the website for you. So click on unit three, gases, in class practice has all the answer keys, the lab has the pre-lab video, uh, and there's other resources as well. All right guys, so in this video, we're gonna review some practice problems um, really out of lecture four. We might touch a little bit on lecture five, but for the most part, we're gonna focus on lecture four. Root mean squared speed is essentially the velocity that molecules move, but we call it the root mean squared speed and you can see the derivation in the video, but root mean squared speed, which we represent as V, R, M, S, or mu, so it's like the micro, that's another way to represent root mean squared speed, but root mean squared speed is equal to the square root of three times R times T all over the molar mass. So it's three R T all divided by the molar mass. Some important things to know here is that R, the R that we use is 8.314 joules over mole Kelvin. So this is the energy R. We use the energy R here because velocity is related to the joule. When we are doing any root mean squared calculation, the R has to be the 8.314 and your molar mass has to be in kilograms. That's gonna be super, super, super important. So make sure you have that written down. Your molar mass has to be in kilograms. So let's go ahead and calculate the root mean squared speed of the molecules in a sample of N2 gas at 25 degrees Celsius. My VRMS is equal to the square root of three RT over my molar mass in kilograms. So what I want you to do is see if you can set this problem up, putting in your R, be careful with your T, check your units, and putting in your molar mass in kilograms. Let's see, we get three times 8.314 times 25 degrees Celsius is 298 Kelvin. Don't forget to convert Celsius to Kelvin, all divided by, so I'm gonna do this down underneath just to make sure we've got the right information. So N2, not just one N, but two Ns, so we have 14.01 times two, which is 28.02 grams per mole. But we need kilograms, so one, two, three, and I get 0 0.02802 kilograms per mole. And again, the reason is because a joule is equal to a kilogram times meters squared all over seconds squared, and so that's why we have to use kilograms here because we're using joules. So if we plug this into our calculators, we do three times 8.314 times 298 divided by 0 0.02802 and then take the square root of that entire thing and you get 515 meters per second. So I got 515 meters per second. And again, that's because root mean squared speed is velocity. Velocities, units, or meters per second. So that's how we go through and we calculate root mean squared speed. Now, some things to remember. Let's see if I can have some space to write this at the bottom. As molar mass increases, so as your molecules get heavier and heavier and heavier, your root mean squared speed decreases. So think about if you're, two people are racing down the hallway, the smaller one probably is going to win. The smaller gas molecules always win. Heavy moves slower. So if you have any questions, make sure that you let me know. But this is looking at a root mean squared speed calculation. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at effusion versus diffusion. Diffusion. Diffusion is looking at how gas particles mix with each other. If something diffuses well, that means it mixes well. So you can think about gas particles in a room. Effusion, with an E, is how something, how gases react over time. Because effusion is about how a gas can escape through a small pinhole. So if we look at this balloon over time, 
Both gases effuse through small pinholes, but the lighter gas actually effuses faster. Because remember, like we said, lighter moves faster. And the faster the gas moves, the faster it will escape through a balloon. This YouTube video shows how Graham's Law is demonstrated, shows this animation. This is going to be very, very important because you will see this example over and over. So if we have colorless ammonia gas and colorless hydrochloric acid gas, it actually forms ammonium chloride. So here's a glass tube. What we can do is we can take some hydrochloric acid and some ammonia. We'll put cotton balls in both ends of this glass tube and we can add some HCl to one end and some NH3 to the other. So we put the liquids on, but those will vaporize into gases. So we put them on, we drip them on each side, and then they vaporize into the gas. And so what I want you to do is just predict where the ammonium chloride will form. Well, notice how it doesn't form in the middle. It forms closer to the HCl. Well, what I want you to do is I want you to think about why does it form closer to the HCl? Well, it forms closer to the HCl because the HCl has a higher molar mass, so it's not gonna move as fast. The ammonia has a lower molar mass, so it's gonna move faster, and so they're actually gonna meet further down the tube. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna look at a calculation that deals with Graham's Law. And so this deals with rates of the movement of gases and their molar masses. So this says an unknown gas comprised of diatomic molecules effuses at a rate that is 0.355 times the rate at which O2 effuses at the same temperature. Calculate the molar mass of the unknown and identify it. So we don't know the gas, but we know how fast it effuses, and we know that we're also dealing with O2. So let's just write the equation for Graham's Law. So Graham's Law says that the rate of gas 1 over the rate of gas 2 is proportional to the square root of the molar mass of gas 2 over the molar mass of gas 1. So this fraction of rates is proportional to the square root of gas 2 over gas 1's molar mass. So now let's just plug in some numbers that we know. So we know that an unknown gas effuses at a rate that is 0.355 times the rate. So I'm going to say rate 1 is my unknown, rate 2 is my O2. Because what we know is that rate 1 is essentially 0.355 times that. So if that's 1, my unknown would be 0.355 times that. And that's equal to molar mass of gas 2, which we said was the oxygen. So that's 32 grams per mole over x. Now this is where you have to be really, really careful with the math behind this. Be careful with your algebra. So to start, I'm gonna square both sides. So once we squared both sides, we're gonna get 0.355 squared equals 32 over x. Now we need to get x on a side by itself. We can't just divide by 32 because that's gonna leave us one over x. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by x. Now I'll divide by this 0.355. So I'm going to get x equals 32 divided by the quantity 0.355 squared. Now put that in your calculator and see what you get. I got 253.92 grams per mole. So that's the first part is calculating the molar mass. So then what we have to do is we have to identify this gas. Now you might be looking at this saying, well how in the world do I identify this gas? Well, we know that it's composed of diatomic molecules. So if we know it's composed of diatomic molecules, that means we really only have certain gases to choose from. Ron H. Cliff. So what we need to do is we need to figure out which of these masses, when multiplied by two, gives us this unknown. So if you work your way through and figure it out, what you find that the gas is I2. Okay, so that's dealing with Graham's Law of Effusion, which again um, sets our rates proportional to the molar masses. You just have to remember that it's opposite. If it's rate 1 over rate 2, that's equal 
to the square root of molar mass 2 over molar mass 1. 